Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green. I'm the manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Wombleys. Currently, as you can see, 12 points clear in first place in League 2, the fourth tier of English football. Today we're taking on Bristol Rovers, who've been roving all about Bristol. Um, and we're going to win. We're going to win this game. We're going to find a way. Uh, although we are starting the exact same team as we started in our last game, which we drew a disappointing nil-nil draw from the uh, AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Wombleys. But we're resting up because we've got two big games coming up. Um, the first is uh, our, our next round of the FA Cup. We're now in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. That's a huge... I mean, to make it to this round as a League Two squad, is, uh, it's just a huge deal. By the way, in a stunning turn of events, raining in England, poor pitch quality, etc. Plus, we're wearing our AFC Wimbledon backup yellow. Um, uh, anyway, it is... Uh, yeah, so that's one game. And then the other game is that we are going to be in the Johnstone's Paint Trophy Final. Uh, that's a competition among League One and League Two clubs, like the clubs that are in the football league but not, uh, not in the top two tiers of, or whatever. However, the most interesting thing about it is guess who we're playing in the final. Guess. I want you to actually guess out loud. Guess. Did you guess? Did you guess Swindon Town? Because that is the correct answer. We are playing Swindon Town, the team that uh, I once managed in that League Cup final. I mean, yeah, in that... Oh, oh, oh! Get Oh, God, the finishing quality! Oh, sweet holy Jesus. Okay, um, today's topic is, comes from Matt. Uh, project, another project for awesome topic. It's a really good one, though. He says, uh, advice uh, on remaining interesting after college. Um... Uh, that's a really, like, deep question. So you, you, those of you who've graduated from college will know this experience. If you haven't, you'll know this experience in some time in the future. You graduate from college, and instead of being surrounded by, like, 5,000 of your fellow students um, who are, like, full-time engaged in learning and binge drinking, um, you are suddenly uh, in, like, a city with or, or wherever, or a town or wherever, and you're working at a job, and the people who are working at a job, like, maybe... Uh, you know, like trying to be intellectually engaged with the world isn't their number one priority because they got a mortgage and kids and stresses and, you know, they've got a life to lead and, uh, you know, the stuff that they want from the their modes of entertainment maybe isn't the stuff that you're used to talking about with your friends. Maybe it's, you know, they just want to be distracted by the mentalist or whatever. I say that, by the way, as a huge fan of the mentalist. Get it, get it, get it, get it, go! Oh, you needed a better pass, good pass... Maybe from the top of the box. No. Maybe you. Oh, God. Yeah, you could just see the work rate, but it's not, it's not there right now. It's just not there. Um, anyway, um, we are, uh, yeah. It is a difficult, it's a difficult, really difficult time of life the first few years out of college um, or if you don't go to college the first few years in the quote-unquote real world because you know you're just grappling with all kinds of stuff that you never really had to before and you you don't necessarily feel qualified to do this proper grown-up stuff and then there's the fact that like you're thinking about the fact that you're going to be doing this proper grown-up stuff for the rest of your life and like how horrible that seems and how unmanageable and you think like how am I ever going to get through this um, forever, like, I, I can't believe that this is life now, and it just seems very difficult. Well, first off, I can assure you that, like everything, it gets, it gets much easier. Um, you know, it, it gets more comfortable, it gets easier, it gets less overwhelming and frightening the, the more you do it. Um, uh, it's just that, like, you know, for the first time, there's no one telling you that at, like, freshman orientation. There is no, like, freshman orientation to the real world, unfortunately. Um, but uh, I think Matt's, Matt's primary question was about, uh, you know, kind of advice for how to stay, how to remain interesting, how to, how to continue to have an interesting life. Um, and uh, I guess, so the first thing that I would say is, uh, is do interesting things even when they make, even when it makes you uncomfortable or even when it isn't easy. Um, uh, one example of this. So there's this writer, Sarah, and I really like, Philip Gorovich. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. He wrote, um, we wish to inform you that tomorrow you will, we will be killed with our families. Um, the, the book about the Rwandan genocide that is just absolutely, I mean, anyway, you have to read it. But um, it's a great book. Uh, very difficult, 
book, but worth it. Not, you know, like it, you, 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 you're, you're happy you read it, if you know what I mean. So anyway, um, he was speaking at a conference about Susan Sontag's book, uh, this book Susan Sontag wrote regarding the suffering of others. And um, Sarah was like, we should go to this thing. And I was like, oh, no, like, it's going to be stressful. And like, we don't I don't know where it is. And I don't know what the auditorium looks like. And I don't know where it, where, where do you get seats? And, you know, all that stuff that you tell yourself to keep yourself from doing things that will be interesting. Um, but like, because I had someone in my life in the form of Sarah who is going to who could say, like, no, we're going to do it. Trust me, it's going to be worth it. It really was. And now, you know, like 13 years on in my life, I think about that all the time. I think about. Um, the things that, oh, Kennedy, your terrible haircut distracted you. Um, I think about all of the things that uh, I learned that day and the fact that I would never have learned them if I hadn't, you know, gone to the trouble to go to this weird little like one day conference about a, a book that at the time I had not read, but turns out to be very, very good. I don't know if it's called regarding the pain of others or regarding the suffering of others, but anyway, it is great. It was a huge influence to me when I was writing um, The Fault in Our Stars. Sontag generally big big influence on my the way i think about um the world around me so f so freaking smart just like ridiculously not perfect or anything but ridiculously smart thoughtful um careful thinker you know all that stuff that people aren't these days and uh, she's someone we could really use to help us to understand the internet a little bit better than i think we do anyway um yeah, so, like, get out of your comfort zone and go do those things, even when they're hard. First off, you'll meet people. You'll meet people who are interesting um, because that kind of stuff, oh, that's a beautiful ginger, but I don't hire gingers anymore. That, uh, that kind of stuff, you know, tends to attract interesting people, um, people who are intellectually engaged and curious and all that stuff. Um, and then, you know, I would also say, like, be patient with yourself. It, you are going to make friends but it, it, it takes a while like it took a while in in school it took a while in college and it kind of takes even longer I have to say in adulthood because um, you know because you are uh, you know just like living a different kind of life um, but one of the main ways that I uh, I like try to like grapple with adulthood is to make these um, these million small moments in your life uh, as pleasant as they can be, not just for you, but for the people that, that you're with, um, whether it's people you know or people you've just been kind of like thrown into the world with. Uh, so like one of the things that I, I think is frustrating about adulthood is that there is an endless list of tasks. And like these, many of these tasks are mundane and annoying. Like today I had to go to the doctor. And before I got, went to the doctor, I had to like register with the registration nurse, which is a ridiculous notion because I'm just going to the doctor. I'm not... Uh, you know, get receiving a surgery or something. And yet, like, you know, here, this registration um, nurse and I both had an opportunity to be, uh, you know, in the same place at the same time. And uh, it turned out that, like, she was, oh, yeah, it has to be. Come on, let's get a goal for the love of God. Penalty? Penalty? I agree. I don't know who fouled me, but I 100% totally, agree with you, referee. Great call. Where was this foul? Where? Here? Oh, yes! I was failed! I was unjustly brought down! Uh, I don't feel so good about strutting. You know what I, Oh, he's injured! He, he did get kicked in the face a little bit, but you would think that he wouldn't be injured. All right, let's think about who we want to take this. You know, let's, let's think for a second about who's the right guy for this job. Uh, player roles. Anybody's... Any ideas, shout them out now. I, I, I can hear them from the past. All right. Why did we pick Strutton? Is he genuinely the best at this? Mm. I mean, I like I like scoring with Yaya yeah, 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 Bamba. Warner's never scored a goal for us, but he's probably pretty bad at penalties. Uh, Lizzie Bennett. Kennedy's hair is too ugly for him to score. Why don't we give it to St. Luce? The patron saint of Lost Crosses. He just, he's the one who got injured for it. I think we should have him line up. See if he can take it. All right, St. Louis. Big money, no whammies. That's not my best penalty. But it's good enough! Oh, he's not injured right now. Oh, he scores when he wants. He scores when he wants. K. St. Louis. He scores when he wants. Now he's going to have to be taken off for injury. So that's unfortunate. <laughs> But he had a nice moment. 
Oh, it's it's almost like the uh, the people from FIFA. It never occurred to them that I would try to score with an injured player. Okay. Well, I'm sorry that the patron saint of Las Crosses has been injured, but I'm sure that we're gonna be okay. We're, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring on uh, gonna bring on Hell's Pels there, and we're gonna bring on John Green and uh, Green Eggs and Sheringham for the last few minutes, and everything will be golden. All right, let's resume the match. We make these substitutions. I know it's frustrating, St. Louis, but you did just score. So that's something. Frankenstein's giving him some comfort. Oh, oh, did you see his mustache? I never knew that he had a mustache. St. Louis is going to be in our lineup more often starting today, or at least as soon as he recovers. So, um, but, but right, but about, like, advice about how to, uh, to continue to have an interesting life. Another thing that I would say is, like, fight hard to hold on to, um, to, to reading. Um, and, uh, like, hold on to, like, watching interesting movies and, you know, not just, not just watching uh, Iron Man 3, although certainly I, I understand and, and, and myself feel the, the need to watch Iron Man 3 uh, to try to, like, protect myself against the crushing um, uh, monotony of adult life. Um, I'm making it sound really bad, but I want to make it clear that adulthood is great. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I understand that, and that's cool. And, and, but there's also room for, there, there also needs to be room in your life for, uh, for, for great books and for art museums and, um, and for all, you know, those, uh, for, for, you know, art, art movies, like proper good movies that make you think about the world around you and help you to empathize better with, uh, with people and, um, all that stuff adds. All that stuff is going to add tremendous value to uh, to your life. So I would encourage you to. Oh, it has to be. It has to be. Oh, John Green was just standing there at the back post, like I can do it. Oh, it's Klukas. Um, but uh, oh, Klukas doesn't get to play anymore. Sorry, Klukas. Um, but I want to emphasize that even though it's difficult at first, like a lot of things that you do in life, um, being a grown-up is uh, really, really good. Uh, there is a lot to recommend it. And I know that I'm kind of coming at it from a privileged um, worldview of someone who has like a pretty great adulthood. But it's not just me who feels this way. I think a lot of people do. Um, initially, it's very difficult to figure out, like, oh, like, how am I going to do all of these things that I'm supposed to be able to, to know, already know how to do? But then you do figure out how to do them, and, and uh, there's a lot to be, you know, like, there's a lot to be said for that growing competence that accompanies adulthood, that growing sense of uh, kind of knowing something about how to navigate the world around you. And that may not meet uh, some definitions of having an interesting life, but I think it allows you to have an interesting life because it allows you to feel a, some security, uh, uh, you know, a, around you in, instead of this like that that constant um, drumbeat of like worry that at least for me accompanied my early twenties. It has to be. Come on, Frankenstein. I mean, you couldn't. Where where was your foot, man? Where was your foot? Non-ironic question. That, oh, hell's pels. It's frustrating. They had a good keeper, though. Full, full credit to them. Um, and we scored our goal. We scored our goal. The patron saint of Lost Crosses got us one, so that's all that matters. But I would have really liked to have two. But today just doesn't seem like it's going to be the day. Two goals from the old AFC Wimbledon Wimbly Womblies. Oh, Maybe. Hells Pels with the cross in. Boom! Oh, great save. Great save. I was already singing. I was already singing. Okay, here we go. Nope. Ah, it's frustrating. Frustrating day at the office. Um, but, yeah, I. with time will come kind of the this, this social, the this, this safety, the net. You know, the net that makes life manageable um and that allows you to do you know the things that you find a lot of fulfillment in uh that's going to take time but it will happen uh you know it'll happen with long-term friendships it'll happen with with partners and with children and families it will happen i promise um so be patient and uh you know just try to be like aware and alive to the amazing world while we're here uh speaking of the amazing world we won the game we are victorious Congratulations to the AFC Wimbledon Wimbly Womblies, even Kennedy and his terrible haircut. I love to see them hug. Nothing brings me more joy. Green Eggs and Sheringham there with P. Sweeney, who's inexplicably wearing that. Oh, did Ball John Green just do a little dance? 
There's Warner, Warner Chilcott thanking the audience. And there's a big hug. Is that me? I guess that's a big hug from me. Oh, no, it's you. Well, I guess I was a little mad at Hell's Pels. I am a little mad at him, to be fair. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Best wishes.